In our study of the Buddha Dharma, the five skandhas discussed in the Suragama Sutra are extremely important. Furthermore, you should know how to untie the six knots. If you do not understand these knots, then you will never be able to untie them and become free. If you can untie them, you will obtain freedom. His mind is aware, clear, empty, and still. At this point, he may be sleeping or awake, but for him, the two states are the same. What kind of state is this? The person actually sleeps very little. He's a light sleeper. He can replenish his energy just by closing his eyes for a while. Unlike some people who sleep from dawn to dusk and from dusk to dawn. The reason they never seem to get enough sleep is because they have not broken through the thinking skanda. They tend to do off a lot. When he breaks through the thinking skanda, he becomes alert and clear minded. Waking and sleeping become the same for him. There is no difference. If you talk while he is asleep, he will hear you. That's a subtle and wonderful state. Don't think you can scold him while he asleep, for he knows what you're saying. He just doesn't let you know that he knows. What a wonderful state that is. Some beings in the heavens neither eat nor sleep and are always alert and wide awake. His mind is aware, clear, empty and still, like a cloudless sky. There's a Chinese saying, no clouds for 10,000 miles, just 10,000 miles of sky. In the clear sky, the bright sun shines for, for thousands of miles around. In that state, the cultivator's mind is devoid of any coarse sense impressions. All the shadows of coarse sense data that characterized his former state are gone. He contemplates everything in the world, the mountains, the rivers, and the earth, as reflections in a mirror, appearing without attachments and vanishing without any trace. His perception of the world and everything in it is like the bright mirror which reflects things and is empty, and the things are gone. They leave no traces. No matter what state comes along, the cultivator does not become attached to it. When the situation passes, nothing remains. When it's gone, it's simply gone. It is said the mind of the past cannot be grasped, the mind of the present cannot be grasped, and the mind of the future cannot be grasped. The three minds cannot be obtained. That's why there is no attachment when they come and no trace left when they go. They are simply received and reflected. He does away with all his old habits. He empties himself of all old habits, stinking habits, evil habits, and bad habits. Take a look at the bad habits people have. Some people like to say really full things. That's a stinky habit. Some people say mean things. That's an evil habit. Some People are generally arrogant and haughty. We have so many bad habits, but that cultivator has gotten rid of all those habits, and only the essential truth remains. The only thing left is a thought of essential truth, which is the eighth consciousness. At this point, the first six consciousnesses and the seventh consciousness are all gone. Now only the eighth consciousness remains, and it must be transformed into the great perfect mirror wisdom of the Buddha. He has now reached this stage, but has not yet transformed it. That's what is meant by only the essential truth remains. Sutra, from this point on, as the origin of production and destruction is exposed, he will completely see all the twelve categories of living beings in the ten directions. Although he has not fathomed the source of their individual lives, he will see that they share a common basis of life which appears in a mirage, shimmering and fluctuating, and is the ultimate 
pivotal point of the illusory sense faculties and sense objects. This is the, the region of the formation skanda. Commentary. From this point on, as the origin of production and destruction is exposed, this refers to the origin of birth and death, which lies in the subtle movements of the seventh and sixth consciousnesses. At this point, the thinking skanda has been destroyed and the cultivator has reached the formation skanda. Therefore, as the origin is revealed, he will completely see all the twelve categories of living beings in the ten directions. He exhaustively understands each of the twelve categories, which include beings born from eggs up to beings not completely without thought. Although he has not fathomed the source of their individual lives, he will see that they share a common basis of life, which appears as a mirage shimmering and fluctuating. He does not completely understand how each individual came into being, but he does perceive the origin of all twelve categories of beings. This origin appears to him like a mirage. Sometimes in the spring, you may see what seems to be a body of water in the distance, but when you reach the spot, there is no water. Trying to call this marriage is oh, call this marriage a, a white horse, a poetic reference to the cloud of dust stirred up by a galloping horse. In the Sura Gama Sutra, is literally called solar flames. It refers to the vapor that rises from the earth in the springtime, forming a marriage. He said that wherever, wherever these marriages appear, the geomantic properties are pretty good. Thus, whether the Buddhist sutras read solar flames or white horse, the referen reference is to marriages. Shimmering means that there's a bit of light but it's not clear. Fluctuating means that the state of disturbance is not very great and is the ultimate pivotal, pivotal point in the, in the illusory sense faculties and sense objects. The six sense faculties are the eyes, ears, nose, tongue, body, and mind. These are all illusory, not real. In Chinese, pivotal point is expressed by characters for the pivot on which a Chinese door hangs and the place where the pivot is anchored so that the door can be opened and closed. Nowadays, we use to make metal hinges, but in ancient China, the doors were hung on pivots, pivots that were anchored in holes. This situation is known as the region of the formation scandal.